Well, hello, you wonderful pet parent. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessica. I am a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer, and this is the Pet Parenting Reset, where we talk about all things dog training, dog behavior, cat behavior, nutrition, enrichment, all the things <laughs> for your pet. Today, we're talking about pet toy safety, and this is, this is actually a little scary, I have to say, but that's okay. We're gonna go through all the scary stuff and at the end I'm going to give you some tips on how to choose the right toys for your pets. The first thing you need to know is that the pet toy industry is not regulated. Period, full stop, end of sentence. It's not regulated, not even a little. And unfortunately that means that our pet toys likely, not all of them, but likely are full of toxic chemicals, like full of them. In fact, a pet mom, a dog mom, back in 2007, tested a bunch of her toys, specifically testing the lead content in 24 different dog toys. Tennis balls had three times the amount of lead levels that than are allowed in children's toys. So first and foremost, think about this. If you have young kids, how many times have you caught them and pulled dog toys out of their mouths? So not only is this dangerous for your pets, this is also dangerous for small children. Now, while there are no federal regulations whatsoever on dog toys or cat toys, pet toys in general, some companies will do voluntary testing. These are the kinds of companies we need to support. And when these companies do voluntary testing, they use regulations for child toys. So they are going to make sure that nothing meets or exceeds maximum levels allowed in children's toys, which could we do better probably, but at a minimum, if this is what we can do, it's a great place to start. A nonprofit organization called the Michigan-based Ecology Center did independent testing on many different pet toys that are available in the United States. In fact, they tested pet toys, collars, leashes, and beds. Of the 400 items they tested, 45% had detectable levels of hazardous chemicals. That's, that's terrifying. Of the tennis balls tested, 48% of them had toxic levels of lead. In fact, when testing, tennis balls made specifically for dogs versus tennis balls made for sports, the amount of lead in the tennis balls that are made for dogs and pets is astronomical in comparison to the tennis balls made for sports, which had little and sometimes even no lead in them. But tennis balls still, even if you get the ones made for sport, are not a good option for our dogs because the fuzz on the outside wears down the enamel on the teeth. And as we know, once enamel on our teeth is gone, it's gone for good. It cannot be restored. Now, unfortunately, our cats are not left out of this. Another batch of testing done in 2007 showed high levels of cadmium in a catnip toy, a specific catnip toy, not all catnip. Again, there are good catnip suppliers out there. Don't We don't wanna deem them all bad, but some of them are not above board. Some of them are not on the up and up. They are providing toys and, and other items like catnip to us that are not healthy or not good for our pets. So we really have to put in the effort to do the research before we start buying toys and treats and food and collars and leashes and beds for our pets. So what we know is that pet products are far more likely to have hazardous toxins in them than our children's toys are. So what can we do when picking toys for our pets? First and foremost, for our dogs specifically, we want to make sure we are picking the appropriate sized toys for our dogs, as well as the appropriate types of toys. So if you have a dog that likes to shred things, then stuffed animals may not be a good option because we wanna also make sure no matter what we're buying our dogs, if they can tear it apart, we never want them ingesting anything in the toys because it could not only block the airway, but it also, even if it gets past the airway, can create an obstruction in the bowels, which again is very, very life-threatening to our pets and can be incredibly expensive when we have to have a surgery done. Even if your dog is not the type to tear apart a toy, we wanna make sure that whatever toys we are buying for them don't have little tags and pieces 
on them that can easily come off because we don't want to create a choking hazard. This is why stuffed animals that are made for children are generally not recommended as toys for dogs because a lot of them have button eyes even buttons other places on the body of these stuffed animals but very very prominently the eyes are something that is buttoned on that is sewn on and not stitched into the cloth or the material these come off very very easily especially for our dogs for any animal but i'm looking at you cat parent wand toys anything with a string or any sort of wand whether it has a toy on the end or whether it's just a piece of fabric that you flail around for your cat to chase these should never be left out certainly not unattended for your cats or dogs to get on these cause some of the most dangerous bowel obstructions because they can actually get tied and tangled around your pet's um, intestines. Not good, very, very dangerous. That's not to say that you can't have these toys. In fact, I love these toys, especially for our cats. Uh, some toy, there are some larger scale toys like this made for dogs as well. Wonderful, just don't leave them out. When you're done playing with them, put them up, put them away where your pet can't get to them. This includes strings, shoelaces, um, rope toys for dogs. So if you get a rope toy for your dog, great. Some dogs these are wonderful for, but if you notice that your dog is pulling the strings of that rope toy apart, needs to go in the trash. Balls can also be very dangerous. You want to make sure that whatever size ball you get for your dog is much larger than you would expect them, like something that cannot get lodged in their throat. You don't want them to be able to swallow and choke on it. You don't want it to get stuck in their esophagus. You don't want it to get stuck in their um, airway, right? You, it needs to be big. It needs to be a larger sized ball. Also, if you have a dog or a puppy that likes to chew and tear things apart, you don't want it to be too easy to tear apart, right? You don't want it to be too terribly soft. At the same time, you don't want it to be really, really hard. Golf balls, absolutely not. Never, ever, ever. They are way too hard and way too small. So again, appropriate size and appropriate for your dog's play style. Okay, here are some of the toxins that can and are commonly found inside our pet toys. The first one being PVC, polyvinyl chloride. So on the surface, you think PVC is everywhere. Okay, yes, and in itself, it may not be the most dangerous thing. However, to make PVC soft and pliable, manufacturers can use very deadly and harmful toxins to do that. Phthalates is the next one. Boy, have we talked about phthalates before. My goodness, they are everywhere. Cancer-causing agents, they're terrible. We always wanna look out for phthalates in everything we buy in our house. BPA, lead, chromium, malamine, arsenic. Yep, arsenic can be found in dog toys and cat toys. Bromine and formaldehyde. Now, while yes, all of these things can be tested, mm, probably not something you can do in your home on your own. And yes, it may be rather expensive if you send it off to a lab. One thing you can test for at home cheaply, easily, is lead. 3M makes instant lead check test kits <laughs> that are commonly available, possibly even at your Home Depot or Lowe's, maybe even on Amazon. I will link some down below. So do your research, right? We want to support companies that are voluntarily testing their products and that are very intentionally doing their best to put out products that are not going to harm you or your pets. One company that I know does this very well and know they are not sponsoring this video, I am not paid to advertise them. I just happen to buy a lot of their products because I know they are safe for me and my pets and that is Westpaw Design. They are made in the USA, in fact, in Montana and they test for everything we talked about and they make sure that the only the safest products go out to you and your pets. I will have linked down below my Amazon storefront where I have all of my favorite dog and cat products, including toys, beds, leashes, and collars. And yes, Westpaw is available on Amazon as well. So those are some tips and tricks to make sure you are choosing the best pet toys for your pet, making sure they are happy and healthy, right? We wanna make sure our pets are healthy and 
by the way, those little kids that may be also putting pet toys in their mouths. Like we wanna keep everybody safe and healthy and happy. So I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have pet parent, friends, family members, loved ones, share this video with them. Also, if you're not already subscribed, why not? Look down there at that subscribe button. Make sure you have clicked it and that you are subscribed and click all the bells and whistles and notifications. Make sure you get notified every time a new video goes live. I also hope to see you on the Patreon family. Yes, I hope that you join as part of the Patreon family. The link is in the description below or you can go to patreon.com and search Jessica Fisher for the Pet Parenting Reset and find me. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. What happens then? You get Oh my goodness, you get all kinds of new and exclusive content, behind the scenes content, stuff I don't post anywhere, plus first look at all of the content that goes up everywhere else. And you will be helping to support content like this coming to you and other pet parents like you. Thank you so much for being here and being a wonderful pet parent. Please make sure to also follow the podcast wherever you get your podcast. It's the Pet Parenting Reset. There's tons of great content there as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, bye guys. Bye.